Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here bringing you along on my journey as I am learning how to make my own sprouted flour for my homemade bread. So um, also just as a note, I've got a dishwasher running and a dehydrator going. You know, this is a working kitchen, so please forgive some background noise. Um, oh, and a three-year-old, did I mention the three-year-old? She's like right here. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me bring you along on this journey. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, okay, I figured I would go ahead and show you first what I've got going so far. Some sprouted spelt berries, sprouted lentils, and some sprouting soft white wheat. I understand this is not an ideal setup, that ideally they would be more on there, um, like at an angle, but I'm sort of shaking them every now and then to try to maintain that airflow until I get a setup where they can be at more of an angle for the sprouting. And then also there's my sourdough starter for my bread um, going and hopefully eventually that's going to be full of flour which I'm gonna grind from this batch of hard white wheat berries. So these are organic. I bought these from Azure Standard and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Berkey here to fill this up and get these soaking for at least 12 hours and then get them arranged on a cookie sheet for the actual sprouting process. So Sage is here helping and we're just gonna go ahead and start the water. I'm using um, filtered water so that, um, you know, the grains are gonna be soaking up the water so I'd rather be using my filtered water than tap water. So we're just getting the grains making sure they all get nice and wet. And I'm going to get these um, covered in their water and soaking with just like a towel over it. Um, it's kind of early in the morning, so I'll just tonight probably drain these and get them started with the actual sprouting. All right, that looks like a good amount of water. Wow, Sage, good job. Good job. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right there. And so there's like little little plant bits here and there. I know it looks almost like bugs. It is not bugs. It's just little bits of plant that are in here. And so that'll be part of the process when I drain it. I'm gonna be kind of rinsing and straining off whatever floats to the top. So anyway, yep, we're gonna go ahead and yeah, like I said, get let these soak and they'll come back in about 12 hours and get them drained and laid out for the sprouting. All right, so the main reason that I am learning how to make my flowers is because of the shelf life difference between whole wheat berries and milled whole wheat flowers. Whole wheat berries, if stored correctly, will last anywhere from 20 to 30 years, if not longer. Whereas milled whole wheat flowers typically have a shelf life that's only like six months to maybe a year if you store it very well. As soon as you begin to break down plant matter of any form, it begins to lose its nutrients and it just begins to degrade faster. And that is true whether it's wheat berries milled into flowers or it's your herbs, your fresh herbs. Like when I pick my fresh herbs from the garden, I store them as whole as possible to keep them as good for as long as I possibly can. Um, and so I'm just here with a couple of my buckets for my long-term food storage. These are my organic hard white wheat berries. And down here I have organic soft white wheat berries. And the difference between the two is the hard white wheat berries are a little higher in protein and they are more suitable for yeasted breads. Whereas the soft white wheat berries have a little less protein and they're better for things like cookies, <laughs> biscuits, and pancakes and other things that you would bake that don't have any gluten structure to them or don't need a gluten structure. A yeasted bread needs that gluten structure. So that's why you want the harder wheats just as an FYI. Um, so soft white wheat is actually what whole wheat pastry flour is made out of. And that is what I make all of my baked goods out of that are not my like sourdough yeasted breads. But for now I'm working on soaking and sprouting some hard white wheat berries um, to create sourdoughs with. And yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so my soft white wheat berries and my whole spelt is actually already done and ready to go ahead and get dehydrated and ground up into flour. So these are going to go ahead and go into my dehydrator. I am also dehydrating some herbs right now, so they could be dehydrated at 105 or 110 um, in order to preserve their enzyme activity, but I am going to be dehydrating them at 95 along with the herbs in my dehydrator and hopefully it will end up working out okay but yeah anyway and pretty soon it will be time to go ahead and drain and rinse the wheat berries i have currently in uh the bowl that's on the right over there the one on the left is my sourdough so all right here we go okay so i have let these soak for about 12 hours and they are all drained and rinsed um i didn't film that part because i'm filming by myself but basically it was as i suspected everything that was floating at the top with just like a little tilt of the bowl it all just poured right off and then um i did like two or three more rinses um, and more things came up and floated and then those got poured off. Um, but now I'm going to take these and split them in between two half gallon jars. Um, and hopefully that will be enough space for the sprouting to take place. If not, I'll just grab a third jar. So I'm going to see what it looks like. Um, once they actually begin to sprout and I'll bring you back as soon as the jars are filled. Okay, so I did end up splitting them in between um, three half gallon jars because two was just way too full. And I fully recognize this is not an ideal setup and they need to be tilted. Um, however, you know, I will be taking very good care of them. And like I mentioned before, shaking them occasionally to aerate them um, and making sure they're well rinsed. Uh, but even though this is only the first day including a soak i fully expect that these guys are going to be ready to go into the dehydrator by tomorrow evening there is just something about i don't know if it's my kitchen is so warm or what it is um my sprouts always happen way faster than all of the instructions say that <laughs> it takes for them to happen um and so they're saying anywhere from you know, two to five days. And I fully expect, like I said, that it's just going to be by tomorrow night, they're going to have little quarter inch tails and they'll be going into the dehydrator. So I won't have to worry about it for very long. And yeah, so I'm just going to keep watching these guys. And as soon as they're ready, I will bring you back for the dehydration part of it. Okay. So it's early next morning. You can see all the little bits of white. Those are the sprouts starting. So yeah, they'll grow pretty fast. All right, so it is the next day and the um, sprouted grains are dehydrated and they look lovely. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get these into jars until I'm ready to go ahead and grind them up. Um, so I basically take that and I will empty it onto my piece of wax paper here, which I reuse multiple times, and then dump them into the jars. Okay, so there was not enough of either one of these that they needed a full quart jar, so I've moved them over to um, pint jars, a pint jar and then a half pint jar. And so I have vacuum sealed these now. I'm using my jar attachment for a food saver, which I don't own, but I had a, I have a brake leader pump that I stick in here and then pump to vacuum seal. And I learned about that from Rain Country. Um, so I just thought I would mention that really fast right now. And um, I will go ahead and um, share about that, I guess, in future videos when I have somebody who can film me doing it. <laughs> but uh, it's very easy. And now these are in an oxygen-free environment. And they will last a lot longer that way and store very well, almost like if they had gone into a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber, but of course light is still able to get through here. Um, so it's not a super long-term solution, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave these and I'm going to probably grind them later today actually. So this was unnecessary, but I wanted to point out that you can do this because from some of the research that I have done, sprouted grains actually have a similar shelf life to unsprouted grains. Um, and that there's argument that sprouting them uh, denatures some of the fats that 
make them go bad. So it is possible they may last even longer as a sprout. And I feel like, how could you get longer than 20 or 30 years? But these people must not be thinking of that kind of shelf life. But anyway, that's just what I have read. Um, and so if you wanted to sprout, the question I had was, could you sprout, you know, say a few <laughs> gallons worth of sprouts and then dry them and store them as your sprouted grain so that you could grind as needed without having to go through the sprouting process? And the answer does seem to be yes. So anyway. All right, here is my grain mill all set up on the corner of my counter. Um, when you buy a country living grain mill, if that is the one that you decide that you're gonna get, um, it does not come with a clamp, uh, probably because you could screw it to wherever you're going to put it. However, um, we're not planning on setting it up in a permanent place just because I, I we don't have, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to have it out all of the time. Um, but Adam had a couple of C clamps. That's why it's on the corner of the counter to have a couple of C clamps clamping it down. And in our grinding tests so far, that has worked really well. And so basically I will experiment with my grinding, but the first thing I'm actually going to do is I am going to finish watching the rain country video where, um, Heidi from Rain Country did just an excellent video all about how she grinds um, her flowers. And she is definitely my main resource right now for learning how to actually operate this thing. And I'm not planning on having video of me using it just because I don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> and so I, I don't know how interesting that's going to be. Um, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll consider it. <laughs> but yeah, for now I'm gonna go finish watching that video and then I'll get back out here to grind up the spelt and the soft white wheat. I'll probably put them together and use them to make something like muffins or pancakes or something like that. get over the hump a little bit. <laughs> you do have it. Good job. You're doing a good job. Okay, so these are absolutely ready to go into the dehydrator. It is the following evening and they've got amazing little tails on them and they're going into the dehydrator. We'll dehydrate overnight and I could start grinding some of them into flour tomorrow. Okay, six full trays, and I mean full trays of sprouted wheat ready to get dehydrated. And it's only about 11 o'clock at night, so. <laughs> Okay, so here is the flour that I got yesterday out of my um, soft white wheat and my spelt berries. And that horrible sound in the background you're hearing right now is the big dehydrator going with all of the sprouted hard white wheat berries, which I'll be grinding up today. But this morning, my plan was to go ahead and make some pancakes with this. Um, but waffles have been requested, so we're switching to waffles. But basically, I have my easy uh, vegan pancake mix, which usually requires six cups of flour, and this is about two cups. So I'm gonna make like a third batch of my pancake mix, and then go ahead and make waffles out of it and see how it turns out. They turned out so delicious. They have such a distinctively amazing taste, but I was thinking maybe it was the sprouted flour, but I think it might actually be the fact that this is mostly spelt. Um, and then a little bit of wheat. Um, I originally used to make all of our stuff out of sprouted spelt flour, but it was too expensive. So I'm really excited to have that back 
in our lives. I'm, I'm remembering stuff I would make a few years ago back when I was buying the sprouted spelt flour. Um, and yeah, it tastes like that. So yay, it's delicious and it worked. Okay, here are all of the little sprouted wheat berries ready to get ground up into flour. I think it's so cute. Um, all their little tails, you can see them. Um, and yeah, we've come full circle. They're back in the bowl. And it looks like about the same volume, so I'm curious to see if they'll fit in the same jar. Um, but yes, I will be grinding these a bit later. Well, not all of them, just a little bit. Um, just to sort of see the experience of grinding hard wheat versus soft wheat. And then I'll give my thoughts and then this video will be over. Okay, so I got my son really fast to help me film this part because I figured I'd go ahead and show it um, just in case you haven't watched Rain Country. And that's one of my favorite channels on YouTube. I get so much information from her channel, so you definitely need to check it out. But also just as a quick little note, all of the wheat berries did not fit in the original jar, which is this one, which I wasn't um, necessarily expecting. The grains themselves do seem to be just a little bigger, but then also those little tails take up a bit of volume, and so that's kind of to be expected. But anyway, I have this jar, so this is what I will play with, actually uh, doing the grinding later, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just vacuum seal this up for storage. So um, hopefully this goes really well on the first try. So I'm still somewhat new to this, but I have the jar sealer attachment for a food saver, which I got actually um, on a waiting list like last year and it took forever for these to get to me. So I think that these might still be hard to get, but you might be able to get some, but you just have to get on the waiting list, um, unfortunately. And I'm really glad I have them. So this is a brake bleeder pump, and uh, it's just it's what it is. You, you look it up and get it. Uh, they sell them at Harbor Freight um, or Amazon or wherever you want to get it. So basically, uh, this is the tube, and it just goes right here into this little hole. And then I'm gonna pump. What Rain Country does, you just hold it, and I'm gonna pump until the dial says 15. So you just do it, and there's gonna be probably a lot of pumping to do because this is a really big jar, even though it's pretty full. It's a pretty big jar. You see the the PSI or whatever, not PSI. I don't know what it is the whatever that is, is milligrams of helium or whatever yeah something <laughs> increasing and oh my gosh so yeah i'm not as good at this as heidi over on rain country i feel like i'm getting a major workout I'm like, <laughs> uh, the other ones i've done were not this hard probably because it wasn't this big of a jar actually now i'm like i'm wondering if it's done because it's starting to feel really difficult to pump but she goes to 15, so I'm listening to Heidi. Oh gosh. Okay, it's bad. Actually, maybe you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just gonna do it. So, yeah, it's just harder, I guess, because it's a larger jar. Oh shoot! I just accidentally released. Well, let's see if it worked. Anyway, uh, okay. Oh yeah, that's on there. So I didn't get all the way to 15, but like I said, it was getting so hard to pump. So I think it was, I think it was done, even though it didn't hit 15. Um, and there's definitely like a, the, you know, the top of lid of a jar, if it's not fully sealed, you'll be able to kind of go like on the top, it'll move, but this is not moving. So anyway, yeah, that's vacuum sealed that'll go into my pantry. And this is also not gonna be mega long-term storage. I'm probably gonna be grinding this up in the next week or so to make my next batch of sourdough bread so that I can see how that turns out. But yeah, I guess I'll bring you guys back when I start grinding and then I'll be able to tell you my thoughts on the differences between grinding the soft wheat and the hard wheat. So, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Yeah, now Thad wants to play with it. <laughs> Is it working? Oh, yeah. it was. It was, yeah. It you just go, go to 15. That's what Heidi says. Listen to Heidi. Well, 
Okay. What? We're vacuum sealing for fun and profit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> You're scared? Why? Oh, okay. Something in your show? Um, so these are strawberry tops, which I've been dehydrating. This is probably at least eight pounds worth of strawberry tops. Not like eight pounds of tops. It's like the tops from eight pounds of strawberries. Organic. And I like to dehydrate them so that we can put them in teas later. And they're delicious. Or infuse lemonade or things like that. When the lemons come in the tree, we can make a batch of lemonade mm -hmm. and put the strawberry tops in there. Is it to 15 yet? No. Is it getting super hard? Yeah, I bet. It's like worth that? Okay, then I guess it's probably good then. Maybe you don't have to go all the way to 15. Well, look, I didn't have to. Is this where I'm supposed to tell you don't stand on the table because there are people watching? Okay, don't jump on the table though. How about you sit? No. no. Okay, how about you sit? Thank you. <laughs> there we are. Okay, also, let's see if the jar worked out. Oh yeah, and you heard the little Oh, yeah. So, yeah, now my strawberry tops are vacuum sealed. They just go through and vacuum seal everything. Anyway, all right, cool. That's it. Cool. I did it. Yeah. Mom, I think we're going to get that. I did it. Oh, wow, you're doing such a good job. Oh. I did it. Okay, I do have a few thoughts after grinding some of this hard white wheat. Um, it isn't quite all finished, but it's almost done. Um, but definitely, um, it is a lot harder to mill. Um, it requires a lot more muscle power. Um, but I just wanted to point out too that um, I'm raising up my flower catching container this time around. Um, but this, also what I'm noticing is this particular uh, grain is not releasing hardly any stuff back here but of course it could be because it's raised up but yesterday I had a whole mess of flour um, around the machine so I guess I can try milling without this raised and see if it's different um, but yes I've got a pretty nice amount of flour from just like one it wasn't even quite full um, one hopper full and uh, this I feel is potentially doable. Let me uh, switch around and I'll go ahead and talk to you guys. Okay, so closing thoughts on this experiment with sprouting grains and making my own flour is um, at least now that I've experienced working on the hard white wheat, I think it's potentially very doable for um, my sourdough bread baking. Now, um, whether or not I'm going to be milling my own whole wheat pastry flour or spelt flours um, from the, the spelt and then whole wheat pastry flour comes from the soft white wheat, um, that definitely remains to be seen. So uh, Heidi from Rain Country, I, don't, I just keep mentioning her because she's just the one that I keep watching. Um, and she was mentioning that um, the soft grains like the soft white wheat and the spelt she added in there, uh, they are a lot easier to mill, so it doesn't require as much uh, muscle power. However, it takes a lot longer to get a flower, and that is bearing out to be 100% true. Uh, the hard white wheat was a lot harder to actually turn the crank um, however, the flour is coming out so fast and it doesn't seem like it's making as much of a mess, but again, it might be because I've actually raised it up this time and last time I did not. Um, another tip I wanted to give, which she gives, and I just like, I 100% I so heartily recommend that you go and watch all of her 
grain storage, flour, whatever videos. Um, and I don't know if I can link every single one down below, but I'll link a few down below that I've been watching. Um, she mentioned that when you actually do the milling to sort of uh, switch your arms, and that is a majorly good tip. And actually, I feel like I'm gonna get so buff doing this because she was saying um, to come on like with your right hand and do, she does 20 turns this way. And then she does with her left arm 20 turns. And then she comes back around and grabs um, underhanded and does 20 turns and then underhanded with the other arm to do 20 turns. And then that way you get kind of like a full arm workout while you're doing this. Um, and so that's actually kind of exciting to me because I have been wanting an arm workout for kind of a while, um, but this I think is gonna be it. Uh, milling the flowers for my family is gonna be my arm workout. So I think it's gonna be great. So I'll be able to incorporate a lot more of the, you know, very well digestible, healthy flowers into our baking. Uh, and then at the same time be exercising. And it's just, you know, it goes to show like, just I'm trying to make my life as natural and um, off grid as possible. I've shared before, you know, our, our dream is to be in like an off grid homestead type situation. We've had that dream for many years and we have worked for years, even though we live in a city to get ourselves closer and closer and closer to that actual reality before we make the move. So I wanna get used to doing the work before I'm in a position when I like I have to do the work. And so that's kind of my motivation behind a lot of this stuff. This is the life that I, I wanna live. And it's interesting too, the more like off grid, um, more natural kind of um, human powered existence I try to live, um, meaning not necessarily everything is plug in, even though <laughs> I do definitely still use a lot of electronic appliances, but I do notice that the more of those kinds of things I fold into my life, the more exercise folds into my life. And I guess it just sort of goes to show that um, living kind of a more natural existence close to the earth as possible and close to more natural processes or kind of old fashioned cooking, old fashioned processes. You know, now we have to like figure out how to work out and back in the day they used to just go out and work you know <laughs> so anyway this is like a thought that I have so oh, I'm excited actually I think that this is going to be doable so I'm going to go ahead and finish grinding that and I might grind a little more and tomorrow I will be making my first batch of sourdough bread with my grain um, and then I know a lot of people say sift it so that's going to be an experiment we're going to be going through tomorrow and I'll probably just end up filming the results of it um, rather than the entire process. So I'm excited about it. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was helpful at all and give you ideas of how you can get started. Um, and oh, actually one more thing I want to say before I, I forget. I love this grain mill. I bought it obviously because it's more of an off-grid thing. It's not powered. But the awesome thing about it is that it's kind of the best of both worlds and you can hook up a motor to it if you want to. You could put a belt on that big wheel and have it go to a motor and have it be an electronic or I guess I don't even know if it could be gas. I don't know. I don't know anything about that because I haven't gotten that yet. Um, I could see if I had a motor I might be doing my own whole wheat pastry flour. We're just gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see as we move forward what that's gonna look like. So anyway yes. As always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you hope you enjoyed it. See you guys later. Bye.